Today we are in Copenhagen because the big grandmaster of quad lines is in town. John Baresi is here in Denmark to show his quad line show. No, not only his quad line show, he is here to hold his quad line clinic. And well, I must confess, me as a single line kite pilot, quad line clinic sounds like hospital. But if I take a look on the guys there, they have fun, a lot of fun. So let's take a look to these guys and take a look what's going on here in Copenhagen. You'll fly forward, then curve up to take the left side of this line. Ready, go. Beautiful. So now we're going to switch the pairs now. Yes, good. So now we are on new rings. Follow your ring forward. You're on top, hammer. Good, that's the blender or overdrive. 180 now. So take note, you're in a middle ring, the, 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 the medium ring or the big ring. Forward around. Switch with your partner. Hold on, go back in the middle. There it is, switch with your partner. Back, yep, 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 yep. Around, around, left side around. Uh, oh, good, and back to the thread line. Forward, yep, wonderful. I know my calling was not clear, that was great. Before, we'll follow the circle, go. We'll switch now and follow your new circle now. Okay, follow your circle, switch with your partner, and back to that thread line, forward flight, yep, to the edge, go, well done. 180 now, go, passing through, 180 now, and go, stop on line. So me and Hammer are one. The center two are two, the bottom two are three. Again, top two are one, then two, then three in groups of two. The idea, as we're passing through in this position, I will say one, and me and, me and Christian will turn, nope, face, me and Christian will turn down side by side like this. So face down, good. Everyone else fly forward a little. So number three, turn down, or probably number two. Number two, turn down. Yep, good. Keep flying out, Farid, keep going. Good, three, turn down. Lovely. 180 now. We, when you hear your number, three, two, or one, you will turn back in towards your thread. Rising now. Three, wait, two, one. Edges, go. Lovely, that's called a takedown. 180 now. Go, it's one, two, then three, ready? One, two, three, all good. 180 now, rising to the center, three, one, two, one, God, I can't even count, to the edge, good job. 180 now, go, take down again, ready? One, two, up, 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 hold on, let's get a restart. So let's set the thread line. Thread line. <laughs> the key with this is that when we're flying across, we will not slow down. Especially the last four kites, as soon as me and Christian turn, something deep inside you is gonna wanna turn or stop. Don't, hold your line and drive through. To the edge, go. 180 now, forward flight, moving. Ready, one, two, three. 180 now, rising, three, two, one, edges. Great job, 180 now, go, passing through. 180 now, go, stop on line, face up and follow. Beautiful. Excellent, roll back into the follow now. Good, now we roll the other way, go. 
Beautiful. Go. That's the odd even roll or big top roll. Follow me through. Let's do it one more time for familiarity. Big top roll or odd even roll. Ready, odds down, evens up, go. And go. Other way, go. And go. Beautiful, hold. So now give me a lot of room between the kites. A lot of room. Beautiful. When I tell you to roll, you're gonna roll the other way. So that sends odds up, evens down, but only on my call. Wait for it. Roll. Roll. And roll the other way. Now. Now. And we should all be clear lines. Beautiful. I think uh, Nils started with a wrap. Go ahead and take that out. Fire drill. Fire drill. No wraps. Take them out. Beautiful. So we call that the bangers and mash, because we were really hungry when we made it. <laughs> Ball of six, hup. And remember, I need a high ceiling with those top kites. Bursting out, go. And twister, anti-clockwise, go. And we're gonna pause at the next point. So you'll notice that at each point, we do fly in forward on this one. So there are two kites on top, there are two kites on bottom, and there's one on either side. So face right, uh, Miriam, yes. And Dan, face to the lower left, good. Fly to your next position, go. Two on top, two on bottom, two on the side. Farid, you're the side? Yes, good, and one more, next position, go. There, so the other way to look at it, it's like a square. Farid, you're the top of a box. Yep, there it is, beautiful. Turn around, fly to the next point, and now, go, and now, and now we're back in the original burst position here. One on each side. Lower mirror, and higher hammer, good. And re uh, face out, and reverse to ball. And I know my calling is coming quick and dirty, that's me. <clears throat> Now, if we roll to kisses, that means the top two kites are going to do a tip pivot up and kiss. That's it. The, uh, the, the, the two kites that are facing out will stay there, and me and Farid hook up and kiss them. Lots of tongue, please. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, gently, slowly, switch place anti-clockwise now. So we move those kisses. So Farid and Miriam, you'll move your, your kiss to the bottom right. Good, so a little further left, Miriam and Farid, so that you become the bottom of a pyramid along with Nils and Dan. Nils and Dan lower. There, see the pyramid, there it is. Now back around one space so we're in the original pyramid. Fantastic. Now we're going to go back to ball on my call, but when we do so, we are going to very gently shake our lines when we separate. Ready? Now. That's to avoid the, the hooks and tangles. Dead left. Yep. So for the exercise, again, to kisses, now. Shift place, anti-clockwise, one space. Now. So you're basically going to let Farid push you. Yep, lovely. So Farid, you uh, fly forward now and do a circle underneath and fly towards the middle center of the window. That's it, good. Back to the line. Okay, so you're going to do that and you'll pass to the top right corner just behind me. You'll see a hole. You'll just fly through the first hole. So everyone, follow your leader, but I want a lot of space between the kites. Forward! Farid now. So I'm one, then Farid, then Hammer, 
then Miriam, then Dan, then Nils. Good. 180 now, and we reverse that order. Nils, or pardon me, yeah, whoever goes first there. Excellent, excellent. And lead back head on. Lead back head on right there. Beautiful. And facing this way, we can do, don't kiss now, come on now. Okay? So if we do what's called a peel burst, we basically face up and swing out into our six burst position. Yeah, so you're going out this way. Okay. Yep, and burst out, boom. Okay, so let's set that up again. Horizontal line facing out. Me and Farid are the leaders. And again, go. Fantastic. And again, go. Excellent. Rising now. Follow me out by one, two, three. Excellent. Okay, we do have some lines and some ground stakes down there. So when we land on the ground, we have to do so cleanly. Don't drag. Find your spot and touch it. Stay there. Uh, let's see here. We're going to do, I got to introduce this first. On my side, the grand grandmaster of quad lines, John Beresi from Portland, USA. John, warm, warm welcome to Denmark. Thank you very much. It's been wonderful here. John, you've been here for your quad line clinic. And I must confess, uh, as a one string pilot or single line pilot, um, quad line clinic sounds dangerous for me. It sounds like hospital. Mm. But if I take a look around here on the guys on the field, they have a lot of fun. So, what is quad line clinic about? Uh, Quadline Clinic, uh, first and foremost, is about education, um, sharing the information. I have 27 years on Quadlines, and I've gathered a lot of information. I'm one of the few that's been able to dedicate my entire life to kites. So um, gathering that information, making it available, and explaining it in a way that is universally assimilable by the pilots, is that's the front line. But the second really is, is the fun, um, bringing confidence to the group and socializing them, uh, setting up a situation where they're able to fly together and enjoy that experience in a greater sense. Sounds like you said you have a great experience and yes if I take a look in the internet no one has so many titles as champion than, than you do I think. Um, I think you have a lot of experience but how did you start the, this history of John Baresi? It's not here now I think you're a long time into the kite scene. Right? Yes. Well, I, I started, I saw my first kites. I actually never flew kites as a child. So the usual story about uh, newspaper and sticks, I don't have these stories. So I first saw a sport kite, a Team Hawaiian dual line kite from top of the line back in 1990 in San Francisco. Someone was flying on the Marina Green there. Mm -hmm. Very and, noisy. Yeah, very noisy. <laughs> lots of pull. Good. Oh, and, and I looked like I was about 11 when I was, uh, when I was uh, 16 when I started. I looked like I was about 11. I was quite small. And I asked the gentleman some questions about his kite. And he let me fly his $300 kite and it jerked me down the field. I went sliding on my tail and I stood up with the biggest smile that I still have on my face today. Yeah. So I went back and I said, dad, 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 I need a kite. I need a kite. So we bought a kite the next day in Berkeley and um, I got into the, the kite magazines at the time, Stunt Kite Quarterly, American Kite Magazine, these kinds of publications. And I saw some of the greats like Lee Sedgwick and Ron Rich, these amazing flyers. And it really just... Um, There was something immediately that I loved. So I went to a, uh, a convention, the American Kite Flyers Convention mm -hmm. in 1990 in Seaside as an unregistered attendee, um, a little kid walking around with his one kite. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had a small pad and I was asking for autographs and things like this, but the... the how, war, how old have you been at that time? Uh, I was, let's see, I started very first when I was 15 mm -hmm. and uh, then I think I had just turned 16. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, the, it was the warmth of the community and their willingness to share information. Even people that were uh, leaders of the community were very accessible. So mm -hmm. unlike some of the other sports in the world, um, The, even the top kite flyers usually are real people, you know. Mm. Well, what happens? So this was the the, the uh, stunt kite department, but mm -hmm. then you shift over to the quad lines. But I actually started quad very shortly after dual line, within one month. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I got my first quad line, I actually had it set up wrong. I put the sticks on the wrong side and I sold it. I was almost never a quad flyer, yeah. but I was reintroduced about six months later, and yeah. um, I got into competition scene very quickly yeah. um, and had a strong tour in 19. 
1992 and it just went from there. Okay. And you always flew revolution kites or did you try something else as well? Oh, I've dabbled in everything over the years. Okay. So the dual line and the quad line have been almost comparable over the years. The mm -hmm. quad line is more visible at the moment because it's so accessible. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I put most of my educational efforts. Uh, but dual line and quad line, I've played with single line. I can handle the show kites. I can bring them up and down. Fighter kites in India. Um, I've done landboarding, buggy. So I have a wide range of experience, but the, the dual line and the quad line really hold my love. And looking on the quad line scene, um, the revolution is all about. Also, yes, there are other quad line kites on the market, yes. but the revolution, I think that's the top of the line. So what, what makes the revolution so special? Well, I mean, to be to be quite clear, the, the revolution is the pioneer. It was, that kite was invented. It was mm. created and conceived by Joe Hidziki yes. and his family. Um, he carried, his family carried it for many, many years. Um, and what we're seeing now, we're actually in a position where um, there's a lot of innovation happening. So we have multiple companies and multiple individuals that are experimenting with the design. And we're basically at the precipice of an evolution of quad line flying, I believe. Okay. And you use the quad line for your quad li uh, line, <laughs> quad line clinic. Yes. Um, what's the program for a quad line? So if I'm totally new to, to, to quad lines, would like to join your clinic. Mm -hmm. So what can I expect? But the, the quad line clinic, um, so if someone could come to a quad line clinic with the kite in the bag never having been opened. Yeah. And we go through the entire process. So we start with a quad 101. I need my own quad? Uh, correct, yes. yes. Um, and it's really just so because it's a hands-on mm. for the most part. So you need to have your own equipment. But uh, the clinics are set up to help you get familiarized with mm. it. So the Quad 101 takes us through the knowledge behind all of the different quad line kites that are available out there in the world, even as more are added, how they work, what the differences are from the fabric to the sticks, the quality of the mm. carbon, you name it, all the way into uh, the, the control methodology, how ergonomics affect, not just the, the XY basic control control, but right down to how you're actually implying your body, your mindset, how we see the sky, how we divide the window, um, all the way through into uh, team flying and, mm. and the various aspects of, of uh, the, the activity. Do you need special skills to be part of your clinic? None. None whatsoever. Um, the, the entire structure really is, to, is set up for success. So we build it so that people are in a position to, to experience the best of whatever they are. And that is really the heart of kiting, is that kiting is an individual expression. So there's no right way to fly a kite. There's no right kite to fly. It's the one that you connect with and that you love the most. And that is part of the heart of this sort of a gathering. Mm -hmm. um, so I think really the heart of it is, is, is finding what each pilot feels good doing, um, showing them how to maybe identify how to follow their nose or their heart mm -hmm. and fostering, bolstering those mm -hmm. aspects and, and filling them so that they can become the best at what mm -hmm. they want to be. Yeah. In my part of the kite world, mm. single lines, we have a big problem, and that's the age. Although I'm feeling like a dinosaur and nothing new uh, is coming after us. Yes. How about the, the quad line scene? Um, we have a younger demographic in the quad line scene. Um, I think a lot of that is because it is a, it's a dynamic kite, it's, it's in motion. Um, also, we have a lot of uh, young people, younger, so by young, You know, we're hoping for 30 and 40. That's that's young at this point. But um, one of my goals, aside from introducing the general populace to it, is finding and identifying people who have that it, that something, that extra energy. So um, my team at home, Team Kite Life, uh, Brett Marshall, Scott Benz, Eli Russell, um, these are people that have a lot of energy. So this plays into the youth thing. So we love to fly to hip hop, ACDC. Um, <laughs> cool. Even the way we move is yeah. more dynamic. And um, I get referenced a lot lot of time to uh, they say are you a dancer uh, do, are you in martial arts and I'm in none of those things yeah. but all things that are motion based really mm. come back to that same heart it's fluidity and using your body and clearing your mind so um, yeah as far as the age demographic um, it's I think it's in some ways a matter of how do we introduce kites as sexy to a, a new younger generation that has a very short attention span um, an example is that a lot of the festivals, uh, you'll hear a lot of classic music. Hmm. Um, in, in jest, we would sometimes call it funeral music. Um, <laughs> okay. And this is not a bad thing. This is, this is quite natural. Um, but we really, in order to capture the attention of the youth, hmm. what they want is they want faster, they want sportier, yeah. they want um, uh, music that they can connect with, something they actually listen uh, to at uh. home. So. 
and maybe we from the single light scene are not good to that. That could be, yeah, that could be. So if someone is, is out there uh, sitting in front of the computer, uh, looking on that video, never flew a quad line before, yes. uh, but thinking about to, to take this step and fly the quad line, what would you like to say to him or her? Mm. Um, well, the, the first one really is, is buried in a shameless plug, which is um, kitelife.com. Um, that's my, my main business. And Kite Life is an online nexus for information. And one of the things that we offer is an online forum. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a zero troll policy. So it's, I think, one of the most friendly forums of any activity that you'll mm -hmm. find anywhere. In addition, we also produce online tutorials. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, I think currently we have 16 tutorials that are available for free on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They're all tailored towards uh, helping a pilot find competency. Basic, comfortable um, feeling with the kite. And then beyond that, we also have a subscription program for people that connect with that information and want mm. to support our efforts um, that take you into more advanced topics um, beyond those online resources the other things that would be good is simply find a kite festival somewhere and talk to the kite flyers because the kite community in large is um, very open they love to talk about what they do and the, the nature of what we do is very friendly mm. so yeah connect with other flyers and the nature of the quad line kite this basic revolution uh, format is it's incredibly durable probably one of the more durable kites in terms of crashing and those sorts of things. And a lot of times pilots will allow you to try their kite or you'll find a learn to fly field there as well. But uh, yeah, you find information online, connect with a festival. You can also look for local kite clubs online. I know that there's uh, at least one club here in Denmark. Um, essentially that line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So thank you, John, for, for all these tips. Thank you for being here in Denmark. Thank you. And you guys outside, yeah, if you're still thinking about kite flying, oh, that's wrong, guys. Come out on the kite field. We are really waiting for you. We are here with open arms. Come out, talk with us and try it, try it. It is worth it. It's easier than so, it looks. And if you would like to meet uh, John Beresi, take a look on kitelife.com. Uh, maybe we need to work together in the future because uh, kite.builders do have tutorials as well from the single lines. Yes. But let's see about how it works in the future. I, I follow kite builders so, also. <laughs> okay, you're yes. following. That's fine. Good. Mm. Thank you for having you here. I hope you had fun. We have a lot of fun of you. And now I know what a kite clinic is. And honestly, I think I need to fly a ref now. So thank you for watching. See you. Bye. Denn det var dig, som har lukket John her til København. Hvordan er du kommet på den idé? Jamen, øh, det kom så af, at vi var til Nordic Kite Meeting i Blokhus. Øh, og øh, jeg fik fortalt, at John han skulle til øh, Europa på en lille tur. Og blandt andet til Marseille og England. Og derved åbnede der sig en mulighed for at øh, få John Bar Barassi til øh, Danmark. Mm. Hvordan var tidslutningen her, når det danske drager flyver? Jamen, øh, jeg vil sige, at 90% af danske dragflyver er deltagere. Der er to fra Holland, øh, en fra Tyskland, øh, som deltager, og det er super lækkert. Ja. Og så en international kite-klinik her øh, i København. <laughs> så hvad med dig? Hvordan, hvordan gik det med dig her øh, på den kite-klinik? Hvad, hvad er din bedste øh, oplevelse? Jamen altså, for det første har det været fantastisk at flyve sammen med alle de her dejlige mennesker. Øhm, personligt har jeg fået meget ud af det. Jeg har lært at øh, få teori på plads øh, i forhold til kort øh, kite flying. Mm -hmm. Og øh, det har hjulpet mig meget. Jeg har fået en hel masse fif, og øh, hvordan jeg skal ændre små ting, øh, for at det bliver bedre. Mm -hmm. Så næste år igen? Det er jo aldrig til at vide. Jeg ja. håber det, men øh, lad os se, om det kan lade sig gøre, ja. og så må vi tage den derfra. Og jeg krydser fingrene for de stemning, der var jo helt i top. Ja, ja så kryds fingrene for det. Tak for det, Dan. Velbekomme.
Christian, det er den første gang, du er her uh, til kite med John Baresi, og du har kommet helt over fra Midtjylland. Har det regnet sig? Det har været en alle tiders oplevelse, og har lært en hel masse. Nu er jeg her sammen med min søn, og vi har glædet os helt vildt til at skulle herover. Okay. Ja, men, uh, det har været helt fantastisk. Det har det. Det har... Uh, han har så meget, vi kan lære af, og, og selv små bitte detaljer kommer han helt i dybden med på, på sådan en klinik som den her. Det, det er helt fantastisk. Altså, det har været fantastisk. Det er jo en, en champ, som man lærer fra, ja. og som med meget få øh, tips øh, kan lave store forandringer på det, man flyver. Det er jo fantastisk. Ja. Ja. Farid, du bist den ganzen væk af Deutschland i Hoch nach Kopenhagen gekommen. Har det sig gelånt? Auf jeden fall. Hvad var dein bestes erlebnis i de letzten to dage? Einfach dieses Zusammensein. Also da waren so viele Kleinigkeiten, kleine und große Dinge, aber mit einem Wort dieses Zusammensein mit den ganzen Drachenfliegern hier, das ist das Größte. Ja. Luise, ja. efter en lang dag hier på Marken sammen mit John Baresi, hvad er din Fazit? Fantastisk. Super, super, super skøn uh, Trainingsweekend mit ja. Rauer. Så hvad var det bedste Oplevelse, du har haft? Uh, team Flying. Mega Team Flying. Og hvad var det største udfordring? Mega Team Flying. <laughs> <laughs> Så næste gang går du igen? Ja. Yeah. Til Mega Team Flying? Ja, yeah. <laughs> lige præcis. <laughs> <laughs> tak for det. Var så lidt.